I think if there's anything that comes out of that that's really interesting to me, it's the, the organic adoption when you get, you get things kick-started with the tools and then the, the cultural aspect of this kicks in. I think that's really fascinating. Um, all right, we have one more session before lunch. Uh, and actually, we're very honored to have some external speakers come and join us today. Uh, so Craig and Peter are here from Heroku. I'm going to talk a little bit about how they've already uh, created uh, a hack and an HHVM on-ramp for you. And uh, if any of you are looking to hack on some new projects today or this evening, uh, hopefully this will give you some ideas as to how you can do that quickly. So without further ado, uh, I'm going to hand over to you folks. Here we go. Hey everybody. I'm uh, Peter Van Hardenberg. I'm from Heroku. Uh, so uh, many of you probably may already know us as a platform, as a service. We got our start doing Ruby on Rails, but it's not super well known probably that uh, our background actually was with PHP. And what happened was there was a period where I think the Rails community was ahead of the PHP community in terms of sort of packaging and, and deployment support. And that's sort of why Heroku started in the Rails universe. But there have been a lot of really exciting. I suppose I don't. Great. <laughs> There's been a lot of really exciting developments in the PHP community. And uh, HHVM and Hack is like super exciting. And we're. <laughs> just really delighted to be here and be a part of this. And we actually want to, we've got uh, hack support for Heroku right now. It's sort of bleeding edge. We wanted to get it like no one's seen it before anywhere ever. Uh, we wanted to put it in front of you. Uh, we've been madly hacking away last night and this morning even, just trying to polish it up a little bit more. And uh, I'll do a live demo and tempt fate. Um, but uh, Craig's going to talk a little bit about uh, sort of a little bit about how Heroku works and how we look at the world and why we're really excited about Hack and HHVM and how it all kind of fits together into where we think developer. Yeah, so really quickly, how many, like everyone here is pretty much a PHP developer. How many people here have used Heroku? Oh, right on. Oh, awesome. Uh, how many people have, year, have used PHP on Heroku? OK, cool. Hopefully, we can change that so there's a few more hands. <laughs> Um, I'll get out of the way of the screen. So I'll uh, speed through some of this then, since most of you are familiar. Um, this is kind of a really important concept for us, a familiarization. Um, and the rest of that is, is cut off. Um, but essentially, <laughs> it's uh, do more with less and less and less till almost you're doing more with nothing. Um, and that's kind of like the core concept of what we, we feel and try to provide at Heroku. Um, so I mean, what does it mean? Um, oops. Um, it's basically, you know, how much can we ephemeralize servers so that you don't have to think about them, so where they basically are non-existent? Uh, how much can we do that with routers, um, you know, um, spinning up load balancers, everything like that, so you don't have to think of it with Heroku? Um, admins to a point, right? Um, they're still valuable. DBAs are still valuable. Um, but we want them doing uh, more valuable things than just keeping the lights on. So how much can we become your admin for you? Um, kind of distilling a lot of this, we run a lot of websites. Um, we run several of the largest websites in the world. Um, nothing quite the scale of Facebook, but uh, we do run quite a few websites and have quite a bit of traffic. Um, what we've seen over uh, quite a few years of, of doing this is there's uh, a set of principles that apply to making a, a site um, suitable for production, scale, collaborating on it, working well with it, uh, that we've distilled into a, a set of uh, principles. Um, so the, uh, the concept is 12-factor app. If you go to 12factor.net, you can read all about it. It applies uh, well beyond Heroku, but essentially it distills down to quite a few things. It's you know declarative format, so you can get up set up quickly. Um, I don't know if you've come onto a project and been like, here's the guide for getting set up, and two days later you're finally deploying the app. Um, we want to minimize that as much as possible. Um, a, a clean contract so that you can move code around to different environments. Uh, decide you don't like your host, great, move to another one. It shouldn't be you're, you're locked in uh, based on unnecessary constraints. Um, obviously, we're biased towards cloud. Um, that's a big part of it. Um, the world's definitely heading this way. Um, yeah, uh, so that's kind of the high level. I'm going to dig into a few of these. Um, I'll try to fly through, because we really are between you and lunch. And uh, we we'll want to get to the demo as well. Um, but a few of these, I think, that are, that are just fun. Uh, version control. Uh, if we look at the past of kind of where we came from with files and folders, um, I think all of us that have touched PHP um, 10 years ago were doing this, where you SSH into a server and just edit it live. And um, you've got something locally that's super different from what's running in production. Um, PHP made it so easy to just copy and paste. Um, 
Subversion, Perforce, Source Safe came along and improved. Now we've got a lot better models. I mean, is anyone here not using GitHub? All right, we've got a person. Um, <laughs> can we get you a shirt for that? Just because. Um, okay, yeah, but I mean, uh, now we've got much better models with Git, Mercurial, GitHub um, to collaborate better, to work better, um, just manage our code in better ways. Uh, logs is a, a pretty interesting one because I think we're we're slowly coming to this. Um, if you look at the past, um, what would happen if you had a bug um, in production? You would SSH in, look at the logs on that server, um, start probably start with the app server, um, say, okay, I, I see a problem here, but this isn't really where my problem is. Um, so then you'd go and SSH into the next server. Um, and you start correlating timestamps, maybe between your app server and your database, um, and then maybe between your Redis server. Um, so here we're SSHing into a bunch of boxes, correlating timestamps, and um, trying to piece together this distributed puzzle um, that becomes pretty confusing. Um, what we're seeing, I think, with various uh, providers is, is logs as event streams now. Um, so feeding all of your logs into a single place so that you have like a single source of truth. Um, you can see how things interoperate, how they work together, um, and you can easily filter on this. Once you've aggregated them all together, it's a lot easier to filter it out noise than it is to take a bunch of different pieces of uh, a puzzle and put them together. Uh, dependency management. So I've, I've been away from PHP for a little while. Um, I have no idea what existed necessarily like five years ago for proper dependency management. Um, from the days I was at it, it was definitely like I would search the web, find some code, copy paste it around. Um, if there was vulnerabilities in it, I probably never knew because I never went back to that page, et cetera. Um, now we're in a much better place with Composer. Um, use it. It's great to have predictability around your dependencies, um, to be able to distribute code. Um, it's just a, a better world. I think you see um, every modern language and framework is, is adopting it, um, and it's a lot better now with, with Composer and PHP. Uh, dev prod parity. Um, so I think MySQL uh, was a lot easier to install than Postgres was. Um, so we see this a lot more in the Postgres world, where Postgres is a pain to install. Um, I see quite a few Macs. Um, if you do run Postgres, check out postgres.app. It's a drag and drop install. Um, before that, it was really painful to install Postgres on a Mac. Um, because MySQL was pretty easy to install, you don't see as much of this. But um, if you've ever deployed code, you know, had it running in development or staging, and eventually shipped it to production, um, and there was some small difference, uh, minor differences in, in version um, in your database, et cetera, um, it can lead to a lot of pain. Uh, and it's really unnecessary. So as much as you can minimize this divergence, uh, the better you are um, in the long run. Uh, one kind of nice piece that, that extends on this is um, Having your config be external to your app. Um, still don't see enough people doing this. Um, so a lot of times you'll have a, a config file that'll have a bunch of hard-coded things. And it's if it's in this environment, do this. If it's in this environment, load these libraries. Um, as much as your code can be pushed to dev and prod and be the exact same code, uh, you're in a better place. Um, so what, how does this look, actually? Um, if you had something like this, maybe, to start with, of uh, you know, staging database is here. Um, you can move a little bit more by saying, hey, this is my environment. It's staging. Um, but really kind of the nice way is just to set up all of your config externally um, and say, no matter where I am, grab my database from my environment. Um, and then your external kind of release processes can manage setting up which environment you're at. Um, so I mean, we, we dog through this all over Heroku. Most of our customers do. That I can push the exact same code to dev and prod, and it just works. Um, I don't have to say it's a different environment. It's the exact same code running, which minimizes a lot of that dev prod parity. Um, so uh, PVH kind of gave it away of why are we here. Um, I'll uh, run through this quickly, and then we can actually get on to a, to a demo. Um, so I only saw a few hands around uh, PHP on Heroku. Um, we've sort of had a PHP support for a little while, sort of. Um, if you push an index.php, it will detect it and kind of run it behind Apache. Um, but there's not a lot of support for extensions. It's kind of rough. Um, I wouldn't heavily encourage people using it today. Um, but what we're looking at is, is really first-class support for uh, PHP. 
Um, this is kind of the first time we're talking about it at all. Um, it's coming very, very soon. So would welcome feedback. You can kind of check our GitHub and, and see where it's at. Um, if anyone wants access to the beta, we can give you more details. Um, but what's it look like? So I mean, standard Heroku workflow, git push, um, proper dependency management, uh, so composer for your dependencies, um, Apache or Nginx, take your pick. Um, they'll both work really well natively. Just say which one you want to use. Um, so a nice production web server, uh, a variety of extensions. Um, so these should just work out of the box. It shouldn't be a headache. Um, and then probably most interesting why we're here, um, HVM and Hack. Um, so it's unclear of what exactly this will be and, and how GA it'll be. Um, it works today. Um, and I'll actually just uh, swap it over to, uh, to PVH and let him uh, dig in on it. All right. We are tempting the demo gods today. OK, so <laughs> I'm doing this live for real uh, this morning. This didn't work. But we've been working with David Zulko, who's watching on the live stream from Munich right now, uh, who's the principal author behind the build pack. And uh, we're just going to try it. So how many of you have seen the Hack uh, cookbook app uh, OK, just the people who work here. So Gabe, <laughs> uh, Gabe here at Facebook built this example hack app and put it up on GitHub. So this is here at the HHVM. Uh, this is a hacklang example site. So I have forked it and added a readme for Heroku setup, which is a little simpler than the old one, which involves OK installing Nginx and setting up config files and blah, blah, blah. So let's try and create this on Heroku. So I'm going to assume you already have a Heroku account. I have one set up on this laptop. So I am going to start by cloning the repo. OK. There it is. Then I'm going to check out my branch, because I didn't want to do it on master. And so now there it is. Good, we've got it. All that this does is it adds a composer.json just stub file, uh, because that's actually what we look for to identify a PHP app. And it adds a proc file that tells Heroku how to start the app, which just looks like this. And that's it. Uh, now we're just going to make a Heroku app with the new build pack, which is uh, Bleeding Edge. And uh, Paul's been building us nightlies, so hopefully this will work with uh, today's build. And this is, where, this is where we really tempt fate here. There was a bit of a race condition, uh, so hopefully this will work on the first try. So what we're doing is we're just pushing the code to the Heroku Git remote. And uh, we're picking up that uh, build pack. Once this is in GA, you won't need to specify a build pack. It'll just all be native. And it's detected the runtime environment. And there's HHVM. And while this is running here, let's see how I can entertain you. It's all about that short <laughs> development cycle, I know. <laughs> Wi-Fi, yeah. <laughs> And if, uh, if fate is on my side, there we go. That should do it. So we can actually look at the logs. And we can see the app is now up on Heroku. The slug is compiled, and it's released. We can see that it's booting. Let's do a Heroku open. And then I'll just do Heroku logs dash tail. So this is actually all the logs for all the different services coming together. You can see it's booting up. It's up and running. And there it is. So pretty straightforward. So let's let's not stop there because I'm uh, I'm feeling confident. So <laughs> let's edit let's edit and make a change. This is no longer going to be a cookbook. This is going to be a schmook book. All right. Get diff git commit. Uh, this is on a branch. And if you're hacking on this, uh, I would recommend that you just merge the Heroku branch back to master so it's less confusing. Uh, or maybe I'll update my repo to just have this on the master and, and update the readme accordingly. But so it's pushing the app again. And uh, if this all goes smoothly, we'll see the change immediately. And you can see it's a little faster this time because it's cached all the files. And so now that we've got this working on Heroku, uh, we're going to keep working on and developing this as time goes by and working with the team here to make sure that there's great hack support on Heroku. And uh, 
you know, for the rest of the day, I understand there's going to be a hack day later. We brought some t-shirts and, and swag and stuff, so I don't think we brought enough t-shirts for everybody. So what I'll say is anybody who pushes uh, a hack app up live onto the internet on Heroku, just come and let us know, and we'll give you a Heroku t-shirt and uh, high five. Yeah, Heroku t-shirt, and I think uh, we have $50 of credit as well. Oh, right on. Uh, and there you have it. Uh, now the cookbook is a schmook book, uh, and you're developing live on the internet uh, with hack. So good luck and have fun. So uh, one other thing as well. Um, I don't know if anyone's attending uh, F8 or not. Um, anyone here hoping to? OK, a few people. Um, the night before, <laughs> and only a few Facebook people, it looks like. <laughs> um, so the, the night before, we're uh, hoping to have a, a bit of a PHP event. Um, our offices are actually next door to where the conference is. Um, so uh, this is not public yet, but uh, herokuhack.eventbrite.com. Um, you guys can get first crack at uh, registration, a free event. Um, we're going to have just a couple of speakers, a little bit of food and drinks, um, and, and mingling. Um, possibly an opportunity to, to hack on Hack or PHP on Heroku a little bit. Um, so if anyone's uh, interested, feel free to register. Um, and then as PBH said, uh, if you get a Hack app up and running on uh, us today, come show us. Happy to give you a shirt and credits. And we've got a few minutes for questions. Great. Thank you very much, guys. All right. Great. Thank you. So uh, that seems like an offer too good to refuse. So uh, we're actually bang on time for lunch. So the lunch buffet is just outside. I have one small request, which is that please can you exit from that back corner over there, uh, and then go past the tables, and then we're uh, going to be able to eat out in the Zen garden just out the front there. And I think we're back here at 1.30. So we have just over uh, an hour, hour and 15. And we'll see you back then. Thank you. Thanks.